right, so now that we have, you know, lots of building blocks for our derivatives, we know how to take the chain rule, we can start doing some more uh, application type problems. So what we'll do today is called related rates. I apologize that this video is being posted a bit late. I <laughs> recorded it this morning, and then I realized that I had forgotten to plug my microphone in. So I recorded a bunch of videos with no sound, which is really stupid. So uh, redoing these videos again, so bear with me. Okay, so, so related rates are basically uh, problems where you're given uh, information about a particular variable, right? So let's say this is f as a function of time, and you're given information about a related variable. Actually, let's just copy this one. Okay, and so let's say this is variable g of t, right? And you're given information about the derivative of one, and you're asked to basically find the uh, derivative of the other at a certain point in time, right? So you're, found, you're given information about the rate f prime of t, the variable f of t, and the variable g of t, and you're trying to find the rate g prime of t, right? So, so usually this will be given, and either the value here will be given, and the value here will be given, and you're trying to find what is this rate, right? And these are interesting problems because they're typically not given an explicit formula for g or f as a function of time. So you're not given an explicit formula. Uh, let me make this a little bit lower. Not given an explicit formula or f of t or g of t, right? Instead, you're gonna solve this problem by saying, okay, well, I know that the rate f prime of t is the derivative of, of f of t. I don't have f of t, so knowing that this is the derivative of that really only tells me that it's the derivative of that, okay? It doesn't tell me what the actual uh, equation for f prime of t will be. Same thing over here, right? I take the derivative of g without an explicit formula for time, right? Without an explicit formula of g as a function of time, all that this tells me is that g prime of t is the derivative of g with respect to t. So instead with these problems, what you have to do is you have to find a relationship between f and g, right? That relates them somehow, f and g of t, right? So this will be an equation with f and g. It probably doesn't have time in it, only kind of implicitly through the fact that f and g are functions of time. Okay, so then, you know, this relationship could come from geometry or it could come from just kind of the given information of the problem, it could come from physics or biology, wherever it comes from, it relates these two variables, which are each functions of time. So then if you take the derivative of this relationship with respect to time, usually using the chain rule, you'll end up with a relationship between the derivatives. Right, which you can then use to compute this rate, okay? So this is kind of the general framework for a related rates problem. And in the abstract, it, it's maybe not so clear, but I'll, I'll do an example of this and we'll kind of match it onto this framework and see you know, what, what we're talking about here, okay? So a typical example usually comes from problems where you have a nice geometrical intu intuition about the problem. So here we're gonna have a spherical balloon being inflated at a rate, at a rate five centimeters cubed per minute, okay? And we want to know, the question is how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing? Right. when the radius is equal to 10 centimeters. Right, r equals 10 centimeters. 
Okay. And so, you know, this question tells you that we have a volume that increases at a particular rate, and we're trying to find the rate of change of the radius. Okay. So the framework that we're given, oops, let's grab the circle. Okay. And grab the circle tool. Okay. So we're given two variables, right? There are two variables in this problem. There's the volume of our balloon, and there's the radius of the balloon. Okay? We're given that the radius is 10 centimeters. Okay, we're not given the volume, but given the radius, we could compute the volume, right? So our relationship between V and R, right? That's the volume equation, right? Volume of a sphere, volume at time t, is 4 pi over 3. R of t cubed, right? So this is v equals 4 pi over 3 r cubed. But then I'm saying volume is actually a function of time because radius is a function of time, right? So this would give me volume as a function of radius. This gives me volume as a function of time because r is a function of time. Okay, and this is kind of crucial to these related rates problems. Okay, so what else do we have? What are the derivatives of these functions, right? We have the derivative with respect to time of the volume, right? If I take the derivative with respect to time of the volume, I get V prime of T, which was given in the intro. That's five centimeters cubed per minute, right? This is given, all right? If I take the derivative with respect to time of R of T, right? So this is given that R is equal to 10 centimeters at some time. T. This isn't the function r of t. This is just r at some point in time t. Okay? And we're kind of asking at this point in time, what would be the rate of change? Right? I'm not saying that r is exactly this constant function 10, because then the rate of change would be zero. But I know that the rate of change can't be zero because otherwise the balloon would not be inflating. Okay? So this information is always describing the state of a variable at a particular point in time. It's not describing the function for that variable. Okay? So then if I take the derivative of r with respect to time, I get r prime of t, which is what we want to find at this particular time. Particular time. Okay. So if we have our relationship between our two variables, we can find a relationship between their derivatives by taking this derivative of that relationship, right? So if I take the derivative of my V as a function of R equation with respect to time, I can get a relationship between the derivatives, right? So if I do this, I get V prime of T equals, right? And so let's do this, right? So I have uh, volume as a function of time is volume as a function of R of T, right? Which is, 4 pi over 3 r of t cubed. Okay, so by the chain rule, right, v prime of t, right, that's dv dr times dr dt, right, or derivative of v of r, which gives me 4 pi over 3 times 3 r of t squared. So this is just applying the chain rule times the derivative of r with respect to time, which gives me r prime of t. Okay, so then I end up with 4 pi r of t squared times r prime of t. Okay, and this is equal to v prime of t. And now we plug in our givens, right? So we plug in our given information, our givens, and solve for r prime, right? That's what we're looking for, r prime of t. So if I plug in my information, well, we know that the volume derivative, the rate of change in volume, we said the balloon was inflating at five centimeters cubed per minute, right? And I have four pi. The radius of our balloon at this moment in time is 10 centimeters squared times the derivative of the radius at this moment in time. And that's what we're solving for. Okay, so we solve for r prime of t, we get four five centimeters cubed per minute divided by 
4 pi times 100 centimeters squared. Okay, so then if I work this out, let me grab my notes where I did this earlier, plug that into a calculator, right, you'll get r prime of t is equal to 0 0.004, roughly. And then the units, right, centimeters cubed, cancels with centimeters squared to give me centimeters per minute. Right, and that makes sense because a radius should be measured in centimeters. So the rate of change of that radius should be centimeters per time or centimeters per minute in this case. Okay, and there we have it. That would be the answer to this problem. Right, so to review, what did we do? We read the word problem. We tried to parse out what is the given information and what are we trying to find, right? We see, okay, here we were given, this is our volume derivative, right? The rate of change of the volume of the balloon as a function of time at this point in time is five centimeters cubed. Okay, and then we asked, okay, how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing, right? So we're looking for r prime of t at the moment in time where r is equal to 10 centimeters. Okay, so, you know, by reading this word problem, we're able to say, okay, we have volume, we have radius, we're given the volume derivative, we're given the radius at this moment in time, and we're looking for the rate of change of the derivative of the radius. So we map that onto this kind of diagram here. We have two variables, V and R. They're both functions of time, right? We don't have an explicit formula for how these two things depend on time, right? We have an explicit formula for how they depend on each other, right? We know that volume and radius are related by the equation for the volume of a sphere, right? So that's where we got this equation here. And we were given the value of r at some moment in time. We're given the value of this derivative, v prime, at some moment in time is five centimeters. And we're looking for the value of this derivative at the same moment in time. Okay, so to get this last piece of information, we had to take the derivative with respect to time of our uh, relationship between the two variables to get an equation that relates the two rates, right? And that's why it's called related rates problems. So we have an equation, v prime of t equals four pi r squared times r prime of t. And this is our related rate equation, related or relates the rates through this equation, right? And then we just plug in the information we have from the problem statement, right? So we plug in this information and that information and we solve for r prime, okay? And that's how we computed that. And in the next video, I'll do a kind of a more complicated example, but this is the general framework for, for doing a related rates problem. Let's figure out which variables you have in your system, which rates are you interested in, which rates do you already have the information for, how can you relate those two variables, right? So come up with some, <clears throat> either from the geometry of the problem, or maybe it's just given explicitly in the problem, how to relate these two variables. Take the derivative of that with respect to time to derive a relationship between the rates, okay?